Hi, my name is Susan Jaffe. I'm a former principal ballerina with American Ballet Theatre. I grew up in Maryland, Bethesda, Maryland, and when I was 16 years old, um, well, earlier, when I was 13 years old, my teacher, her name was Hortensia Fonseca, a little uh, ballet teacher from Costa Rica, uh, she, took, she started taking groups of us up to New York City to win scholarships. And so first summer I went to SAB when I was 13, and then I decided I really wanted to do full-length ballets. I wanted to do story ballets. So the next year I went to American Ballet Theater, and I kept going back in the summers and when I was 16, I joined the second company of American Ballet Theater, at that time called Ballet Repertory Company. So I was there for two years, and um, I had some nice things to do, although I was sort of the star of my ballet school, and when I got into the second company, I wasn't the star anymore, so it was sort of a little bit uh, difficult for me, those two years. Um, I felt like I was pushed aside a little bit, and um, it's a very, very difficult time. Around the end of these two years, uh, we found out that Baryshnikov uh, was going to take over the directorship of ABT. And so he came into our class to watch our class. And of course, we were all very, very nervous. And at the end of this class, the coach from the ballet repertory company came to me and she said, you know, Misha thinks you're very talented. So that was kind of wild for me because I had been sort of overlooked, I felt, for a couple of years. And so uh, Misha came to see one of our performances and I was doing Raymonda. And after that, they asked me to um, audition for the company. It was a huge audition with about 200 people and we all had our numbers and after every combination they would they would tell certain numbers to leave and it was very nerve-wracking and at the very very end of this audition <clears throat> a very large man his name was Charles France and um, he used to say you know my name is Charles France like the country and he, he kind of looked like Henry VIII. He had this long golden color hair and these big turquoise glasses and he loved to wear pins on his lapel like little pearls and things on his lapel and, and he came up to me and he said um, and he used to love to push up his glasses and he would look over his glasses and he would push up his glasses and he came to me and he said I just want you to know that Mikhail Baryshnikov thinks you have a very bright future with this company. However, you're going to have to lose 10 pounds by the end of the summer. And I, I looked at him and I said, yes, but Mr. France, you know, I've been on a diet for the past four years. How am I going to lose 10 pounds by the end of the summer? And so they sent me to a diet doctor and I had to learn how to eat liver and onions and jello for dessert and all of these things. And I had to actually inject myself every day with vitamin B because apparently I was eating too many, too little calories. And it was a very, you know, I think nowadays that would never happen in a ballet company. But back then, you know, they could talk about your weight, they could tell you you were overweight and they, they, you know, there was a lot of, I think a lot of eating disorders back then due to that. And I think the aesthetic of Balanchine and they really wanted very, very skinny dancers. Anyway, by the end of the summer I had lost eight pounds and they took me into the company. Um, and it was a very, very sad time for me because right just before I joined the company my mother died. and. She never knew that I joined the company, so that was very sad for me because she was really the one that put me through dance lessons, and so it was, it was a difficult time. But it was also a very exciting time, and Baryshnikov was taking over the company. We had a gigantic 
three month rehearsal period before our opening night, which was at the Kennedy Center, which is right next to my hometown. And um, so we had this rehearsal period and I remember looking on the schedule and it was Patrick Bissell and Mariana Tchaikovsky and Gelsey Kirkland and Fernando Bajonis and a couple of other sort of big stars and me. And you know, I was just this 18 year old little girl from Bethesda. And I remember thinking, that's a mistake. That's a mistake and I'm just gonna go and tell them that, that they've made a mistake and they put me so I walked in the office, you know, and very shy, and you know, I, I think you've made a mistake. Oh no, we haven't made a mistake. So it was, it was really strange for me because um, they really were pushing me, and you know, there was so much upheaval in my life, and there was so much uh, ambiguity. Uh, interest towards me for the past two years so suddenly being sort of pushed like that was it was shocking in a way it was quite a shock um, but I went into rehearsal and we were learning pas de uh, this pas de deux that is from Le Corsair and um, there was good enough and Bissell and I remember I worked a little bit with Patrick Bissell and he said you know Oh, girl, you have a lot to learn about being partnered. Well, you know, I'm going to have to teach you, you know. And he was very earnest, you know, and tried very hard to get me to try to know what it was to be partnered. And anyway, we had a few rehearsals. I learned it. And um, Gelsey and Patrick were to do the opening night. So I didn't really um, rehearse it much after that. Um, but two days before the opening night, we were in Washington, D.C. There was a huge dress rehearsal that day, and with lights and orchestra, etc. And uh, Patrick and Gelsey didn't show up to their dress rehearsal. And, you know, they were having some difficulty uh, at that time, and Misha fired them. And he came to me and he said, how would you like to go on in the place of Gelsey? And I said, oh, you know, uh, thank you so much, you know, for believing in me, but, you know, I just joined the company. I'm supposed to do the Shardish and Ramonda on opening night in the fifth, fifth girl in the back, you know. I'm not ready to do this. And he went, you're going to be fine. So they threw me into the studio with Goodenough. And I, I don't remember any, I thought I was gonna die. You know, I, I, I didn't know what to think. You know, here was this very tall Russian sort of Adonis, you know, with long blonde hair. I didn't even know if he could speak English. And I had a Russian, her name was Diana Joffe, a Russian teaching me. And she was had such a heavy accent. And I remember she asked me to do something and I said, what? You know, I don't understand. And, Sasha, in perfect English, turned around and said, she said, you know, blah, 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 you know, and so it was really um, astonishing to hear that he could really speak English. Um, and we rehearsed for two days, and I went out on stage and did the performance. And it was so odd because suddenly people wanted to interview me, people were talking about physical features. Nobody ever talked about anything about me, you know? And so I really was from nowhere into suddenly a lot of interest and articles and reviews and things. And I remember thinking, I'm being thrown to the lions. And if I don't fight, if I don't really fight, I'm, I'm gonna be eaten, you know, by this. this is, this is too much for me in a way. It was overwhelming and, and it took me, I would say it took me about 10 years to feel like I actually stepped into my own shoes as far as feeling confident and 
oh yes, okay, now I'm actually that person they talk about. Because really for the first few years, I, I tried so hard, I worked so hard, I did all extra Pilates and extra, all kinds of extra classes and read as much as I could and did so many things so that I could live up to whatever I thought that they were expecting of me. Um, but I never felt that I was there. And I remember thinking, when are they all going to find out that I'm actually not talented? You know, I mean, that's how it was. I mean, I just, I just didn't have that belief, you know. But Misha had that belief. And so I didn't really have to. He had all the belief for me. Um, and I finally, you know, I, after that I worked so hard. My first in Swan Lake was, I was 19. And Giselle, I was 19. And continued to get full length ballets uh, year after year after year. And just kept trying to grow and, and all of that. Um, but I have to say that after about 10 years, I started to feel, okay, I'm, I am in a, in, the good, in a good place. But I started to feel quite empty, um, that I felt that I had developed my technique. I could do all that was required of me. I tried to be stylistically correct in all the ballets. But I didn't feel that the internal life was really grounded, that I really needed to believe in my characters deeply in order to, to portray the characters with, the, with a re, real belief in them. So I hired a dramaturg and I spent most of my paychecks working with him, uh, we, I would work for two days a week, hours and hours after my long days of rehearsal, going through every detail of the ballet and why sort of the large picture of a ballet, you know, what the choreographer would have seen, what uh, the relationship of my character is to all the other characters, what the era is, you know, what were the customs, what were, you know, what really motivates a character and what are their blind spots, what are their obstacles and what are their strengths so that then after that I could get into the specificity of individual scenes and it opened up a whole new world for me because then I was really moving from an internal en engine rather than, you know, ballet can get so trite, you know, it can get so all about the style and all about the pirouettes and the extensions and to me that is, is has nothing to do with the art. I mean it really, when you look at those old uh, movies like the Ballet Russe and you see those artists up there and their personalities are so encompassing and there's so much presence and there's so much gravitas in their work, even though, let's say, they don't have the extensions or the pirouettes or whatever it is of my generation and, and um, generations after, they still had these, this depth that um, I think is, was, first of all, hard fought. They were, they were also very educated. Life was slower back then. They read much more um, than subsequent generations. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to be that. I wanted to have that gravitas and belief. And I wanted to move people on a deep and spiritual level. And I fought very hard to do that. Um, Maybe I accomplished it in some cases, maybe I did it in other cases, but it was a continual journey for me as, a, as an artist to find the deeper meanings in everything that I did. Um, and I also worked uh, internationally. 
um, after I started to feel even more strong in, in my interpretations. So that was really fun to really get to work all over the world. And I retired in 2002 uh, at the age of 40. Um, and people were saying, you know, why did you retire? Why did you, it's so early, you know, you're still so good. And, and I would say, better to say why than when. You know, because I saw, I've seen so many artists, I believe, overstay their time on the stage and I never wanted to do that. I wanted to leave feeling really good about my work and I thought I'm still young, I'm still energetic, I can create a whole new life, which I did. Um, I uh, got a job with the chairman of American Ballet Theater. I worked with him for five years and I worked with the board and um, all the administration of American Ballet Theater, which is a, what a whole different world for me. And I also opened up a ballet school and um, learned business and what it really meant to teach and what it, you know, choreography came out of necessity. I didn't really want to choreograph because um, I did say the three things I would never do when I, when I retired was I'd never teach, I'd never choreograph, and I'd never come back as the queen. And I did all of them. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin McKenzie asked me a couple years ago, please, you know, we've run out of dancers. We need somebody to do the queen in Sleeping Beauty. Would you please do it? And I said, oh, God, oh, okay, you know, I know you're in trouble, but so, um, but I found that I really, really enjoyed choreography. I love teaching too, um, but choreography, you know, really takes a, a very different kind of brain, a structural brain, a spatial brain, architectural, as well as, you know, obviously it's very creative because you're, you're basically uh, taking a blank canvas and you're, you're developing your inner life on somebody else. So, um, so your ideas have to be very clear and sometimes, you know, you're bumping around the dark, you don't know what you want to say and then of course that shows. So, you know, it's, it's right, it's immediate, um, tells you if where you're going is from a real place and not just, oh, well, let's throw in an arabesque over here and, you know, things that are for nothing. That's not the art form.